YouTube friends, what's going on? David Lee back with a brand new video and today we're talking about color grading using Adobe Premiere Pro. Color grading is one of my favorite things to do next to being a camera operator, uh, next to being a cinematographer. I think it's because when you start to add color to a log profile or a flat profile um, image, you can create exactly what you want to create. It doesn't have to necessarily be something um, extravagant, but it can be, and that's the beauty behind color grading, is it gives you the unique opportunity to create a visual image um, that is in relation to whatever story, whatever theme that you have for your, your film, your video, your project. There's different tools out there to use for color grading. Final Cut Pro 10 has its own tools, DaVinci Resolve has its own tools, and Adobe Premiere Pro has its own tools. So today we're gonna to dive into using Lumetri Color, all the different um, like tabs and drop downs within Lumetri and show you exactly how you can create a uh, orange and teal look, which is you know pretty popular and pretty standard, uh, whether you're on YouTube or a content creator, and also for Hollywood, you know they still use orange and teal because those two complementary colors still work in today's day and age, and I think it'll work you know until the end of time. I also have two more videos planned on color grading. One is going to show you guys how to do sort of like a sepia tone um, if you have a nostalgic scene. Uh, maybe it's like a flashback scene that you want to use for um, for a film or video. And then the other video is going to be about uh, day for night and night for day, how to accomplish that using Lumetri. Again, no plugins, um, no purchase necessary. All you need is Adobe Premiere Pro. With that being said, let's go ahead and hop into Adobe Premiere Pro and let's get started creating this, what I call a mojo look or your orange and teal look. All right, so we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, which most of you uh, should be familiar with. I have a simple sequence. Uh, this is a 2.5K timeline, just to kind of give you a little bit of background. Uh, we're working with a very short sequence um, of a recent documentary that I did, kind of like, you know, um, like a vloggy type thing in the beginning and then actually into um, a BTS clip and then an actual clip of, um, uh, this is a football documentary. So the last clip in its end of the sequence is during halftime when everyone's in the locker room and uh, you know, the coaches are talking about what's happening, um, what to expect, the game plan, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get started by dragging in um, our clips. Uh, this is 1920 by 1080. So let's go ahead and just bring this to size, just a frame. Uh, this is shot on the Canon 1DX Mark II uh, with the EOS HD custom log profile. All right. So as you can see, you know, I'm driving and then just making sure my camera isn't falling over, going through a tunnel. Cool, right? So we can start from here. I think that's a good spot right here. So let's get started with how do we color grade? Well, the first thing you want to ask yourself is what colors are you going for? In this specific um, video, we're going for that mojo look, that orange and teal look, right? Which you can kind of see already is happening. Um, you know, my skin tone obviously, you know, should be that kind of orange color, right? The mid-tones or highlights. And then the shadows should have this uh, like cooler tone to it, all right? So let's go ahead and add a instance of uh, Lumetri on this guy. And then let's go to color, just so you can guys can, just so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. So the first thing you wanna do is, you always wanna color correct your footage, right? Color correction is simply adjusting your exposure, your white balance, and your contrast levels. Um, I'm not seeing any, anything too weird with white balance, so I'm not gonna touch that. Uh, contrast, there's different ways you can do it. Um, if you're in the basic correction uh, window here, you can adjust contrast by, you know, taking away contrast or adding contrast, right? Kind of just depends. Um, that's one way to do it. You can also go into the curves tab. Um, if you're using a different version of Premiere, like 2018, you won't see these, but as long as you have this, which like any version of Premiere from 2015 on should have this, is, you know, just create a nice simple S curve. So you would create a point in the middle and then take your shadow area, start bringing that down, right? just to create a little bit of contrast. And you can see as soon as I started doing that, the top part of the S curve, which is like the highlights and the midtones, start to go up as well too, right? And you can also see that um, with the um, with the waveform monitor and also with the RGB parade, right? I tend to use um, curves as it gives you more granular control of your, um, your exposure, right? But if you don't wanna deal with that, I would say probably the easiest thing to do is just uh, basic correction 
and adjust the contrast curve, right? It basically just does the same thing, right? Um, so let's go ahead and go back to curves since that's, you know, you gotta practice what you preach, okay? Um, let's see, that's before, after, I think I might need just a little bit less, just a hair less, right? And for me, that's good enough, right? So we'll go before, before, after, right? Just a little bit of contrast. All right, now let's start playing around with the color. For this one, go into your Creative tab. Again, there's different ways to do this, but I think the Creative tab is probably the easiest way to do it. And you'll be using these two uh, color wheels. You have your Shadow Tint and your Highlight Tint. So it's going to do you know, what it says. It's going to add a bit of a tint of a specific color to the shadow areas, right? Um, and then also to your highlight areas. As far as midtones go, the only thing that's really a midtone is my arm. And that's probably it. Yeah, my face is pretty much on, on the dark side, right? Start with the shadows. Hold that down. And you can do one of two things. One, you can bring it more towards like that average regular blue color, right? Which is like here, right? So blue. The opposite is teal, right? So it kind of has like that greenish tint to it. We're going to stick with this color, right? As you can see here, the farther you go, the more um, higher the luminance and the more kind of like the saturation is, right? If I bring that closer towards the midpoint, the less, uh, you know, the less pronounced the tint is, right? Bring it all the way in the middle. You can see we're kind of back to normal, right? So that's, that's normal. You're just going to go all the way straight down until you start to see the levels change um, visually, right, on the clip itself, and also using uh, your waveform monitor, your RGB parade, um, vector scope. I I keep this on, but I don't really look at it much unless um, there's all sorts of lights coming onto someone's face. You know, uh, if you have like purple light and then. Uh, amber light and an orange light, then I do use the vector scope to see exactly where things are hitting. But in a situation like this, like, you know, we're good, right? So let's do this. Let's go before, after, right? So I basically just cooled the shadows down. Very, very simple. Now the highlights are going to do the same thing, right? As far as going the opposite direction. So we went towards teal in the shadows. We're going to go more towards um, orange or red, depending on your situation, right? So right now I'm going more towards orange. Uh, if you go to red, I, I don't usually use red too much just because see now the sky has this like um, magenta, like cotton candy kind of color. Maybe you want that though, right? So you have that option. Um, as far as just creating the standard orange and teal look, I tend to go more towards um, the orange spectrum, right? So as you can see here, let's go um, before. And then I start bringing the highlight tint over towards that orange area maybe about right there and then play around with it right turn it off turn it on okay turn it off turn it on uh, now my highlights are kind of creating this mm, almost like a green hue to it right so i may need to just back this off ever so slightly because i still want the sky to look you know representing some kind of blue or green right so before after before, after, right? Uh, let's just put this clip back. Still looking okay. Yeah, so looking not too bad, right? So before, after, right? I may want to pull this back just a little bit. Sometimes it can be too much, right? So you kind of have to finesse it. But to me, this looks pretty good right here. Okay, before and after. Let this play out, okay? And that's probably the simplest way to do the orange and teal look, right? Uh, let's go to the next clip and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So, we're here, reset our frame size. So again, this is kind of sequence where I'm driving, driving, and then here I'm driving through this, you know, forest foresty looking area okay uh, we can start I think probably here is a good one and you know again same thing right so when we're here again color correction however you however you know which way you want to do it I'm gonna use my curves um, I'm gonna bring just 
a little bit of contrast, not too much because you can see it's um, it's pretty underexposed, right? As far as the shadows go, um, that was just a choice that I made, right? Because if I go any further, then you know it's looking it's looking pretty crunchy there, right? So I just want I just want a little bit, not too much. I might even adjust this, okay? Maybe bring up. There, I like that. Okay, so we're here. Uh, let's start going into our orange and teal look. Okay, so same thing. I'm gonna bring down the green tint, right? And maybe you want to go a little bit more so, right? Maybe that's just the look you're going for. Cool, right? There really isn't a right or wrong. I think it just depends on like how how extreme you're going, right? So like for me, this is before and this is after. I'm cool with this. But if I were to go like all the way down here, then this, you know, this, I don't know, maybe you're, maybe you're shooting like a sci-fi movie. Okay. Then I think this works. Um, but for me that that's just too much for something like documentary based or like, you know, if you're creating a, um, any kind of, I guess like a standard or realistic film. right. Okay. So highlights, same thing. We're going to go up and you can already see it changing, right? It's kind of giving that little cotton candy look, right? Maybe that's what you like. Um, here in California, we've been having a lot of fires uh, lately, so you know a lot of cotton candy skies. Um, but I'm thinking right now we can just go uh, just a little bit here, okay? So you have your before, and then you have your after. Let this play out, right? Pretty much orange and teal, right? You still have this little hint of of, uh, of green or teal in the shadows. And then just a little bit of a hint, you know, of uh, like orange um, or that warm color in highlights and midtones, right? This clip here, which is the halftime, uh, this was actually shot in um, 4K, I think. Yeah. So let's adjust this guy. So this is from the Ursa Mini Pro, um, 4.6K. I shot this in ProRes 4444XQ. So it's the highest level of pro is before you get to um, like raw basically okay um, I like I like this frame here or is it yeah right here I like this frame okay let's go with this guy so same thing we're gonna look at our scopes here um, fairly underexposed but you know if you can get it in camera that's what I do just get it in camera the look you want at least and then um, we're gonna adjust our color correction just a little bit, right? So I'm actually gonna raise the contrast up a little bit. Probably here is good, yeah. I don't wanna do too much to it, all right? So before, after, I actually, you know, brought, brought back in um, some contrast. I'm gonna see how much of an exposure adjustment I can bring up before things start looking kind of weird on me. Okay. So just a little bit right before, after. I think that's good enough for where we want to be. Okay, uh, maybe adjust the contrast a little bit, just a little bit, right? Like 4.9. I don't even know what, what exactly the value is, but I mean it's just enough, right? All right, let's start adding in our origin teal. I'm gonna go back to the creative tab. Start to bring some. Some teal into our shadows. Cool. And then our highlights. Let's see. I'm digging that. Scrub through, scrub through. I might bring in just a little bit more into the teal. All right, so we got before and after let this play out let this play out okay i think we probably need to add in just a little bit of saturation not so much something like that right 
Cool. So again, we'll go before and after, right? You, you have that little hints of, of teal, and then you have your hints of uh, orange in the midtones. And obviously, if you wanted to do more stuff to it, you know, if you wanted to um, make this a darker image or a brighter image, you can you know, adjust it appropriately. And there you guys have it, the quick and easy way to add an orange and teal or that mojo look to, um, to your videos. I think color grading is a great thing because it allows you as the artist, as the creative, to do something unique to you, to show um, you know, your client or to show, um, maybe it's your audience, right? Maybe it's the film that you're creating, the look that you wanna go for, um, is something that resembles a, a movie or a film you would watch in a movie theater or on the big screen. If you guys liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel just so you're notified of new content coming out. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know your best color grading tips and also if you like uh, the origin teal look as well as if you guys want the uh, the sepia color uh, color grading and also the day for night and night for day uh, color grading videos. And remember friends, every day you have an opportunity to create your experience and to write and tell your own story. My name is David Lee and I'll catch you guys in the next video.